Welcome everybody back to Just Plain Crazy. I am Brendan. Thanks for joining me again on another episode and let's get right to it. Let me tell you a story of lovely late. Now, this is a fellow club member, Mark. Mark purchased his free wing AL37 from Motion RC the same time that I purchased mine way back when this thing was first released. Since then, I've got the Toy Story edition done, finished, flown many times over. Mark has not completed his. So one day he comes up to the field and says, Brendan, would you be interested in customizing this thing for me? Don't tell me what it is. Set it up. Get it to fly just like yours and surprise me with it. How can I turn that down? How exciting. I got a blank slate. It's not quite a blank slate. It's a uh, the white version with the blue tail, so we're going to cover that up. But basically, I have a blank slate to work with. I can do it whatever I want. He just simply asked, hey, can you make it bright so I could see it up in the air? No problem. We'll do that. So what do I do? Do I do a United scheme, a FedEx scheme? Do I do Air Jamaica? Do I do an Alaskan Airlines? So many cool Alaskan Airlines schemes like the Toy Story one. You can check out that build right there. Nope, I'm going to go a different route. And I hope you guys follow along to see what it is. So I'm going to hold out on you for a little bit. Let's get to it. I am going to give you guys one secret hint. Mark's daughter builds animated robotic dinosaurs. Uh, maybe I can work with that. <laughs> So I have two schemes in mind, and both of them are going to be trial and error, and I don't know which one I wanted to go with. I'm not fully decided, but, but I'm going to practice. I have my rainbow assortment of colors, so I'm going to use those two and those two. I'm going to just, uh, with a gas can there in the background for support, we're going to put that there. We've already played on some other pieces of cardboard, as you can see, and uh, we're going to take these down. We're just using a mix of... Uh, Krylon and Rust-Oleum. I use those on the airliner and they work just fine. And then I want to do those two together and see which ones I like. Here's the thing. I've been working with Cali from Cali Graphics. Hit the link up down below. If you do not know who Cali Graphics is, cali has been in the RC industry forever. She makes super cool custom graphics. She's the one that made all my Toy Story stuff for me. And she's working with me on this project. We've gone back and forth several times. Super patient. I love dealing with Cali. She is uh, does phenomenal work and is out of this world when it comes down to hooking me up. So with that being said, make sure you check down in that link below on how to get a hold of Cali for super graphics like the one I'm going to put on this plane, as well as the Toy Story airliner. So let's get into painting the schemes and we'll see which one you like best. Scheme number one, we are going to start with a bright yellow on the bottom. So this is John Deere yellow. Give it a good shake. And we're going to crest the bottom. Make that bright yellow. And then lighter up at the top. So we're going to have a fade. Now, we're going to make a bottom black line if I go with this scheme on the bottom of the plane. So we're going to have a black pinstripe. Now, we're going to throw in some uh, gloss golden sunset. And I like gloss for shiny planes and matte for like military warbird stuff. So this is going to be an orange. Now, here's the secret to painting. If you start right here and you go like that and you go, that's why you get runs. When you spray paint stuff, you want to start off of the object and end off of the object. So you want to do just one continuous path out there right across. So we're going to let our orange fade into our yellow like that. And now we're going to come in with a, uh, this is going to be a, like a satin. I want it to be kind of not overbearing. I want this to be the undertone. So this is fire orange. And we'll cap that. <clears throat> Maybe we'll give this one more run through the center. And then we're going to chase this with another, um, this is apple, apple red. Yep, 
Yeah, I kind of like the way that looks. Now I think what I need in there is just a little bit more of this darker yellow. We're going to pull that more into in there. This is that sunset yellow. And this is the nice part when we're going to do multiple colors like this. We can go back over it and just reverse that scheme a little bit. So we'll hit this one more time with that sunset in there. A little bit of the orange. And then we're going to take the red over the top. So the red is going to be what crests the top of the plane and comes over the other side. Yeah, I think I like that. So as long as I can keep my line shot fairly straight in there and not too big of a dip, I actually like the way that looks. So the other color choice, if we go here, is going to be, as we do the yellow on the bottom. Now this is going to be gloss sun yellow. Like that and then we have this super bright gloss jungle green if I can get the cap off there we go and I don't want fine lines here both of these are going to be and the nice part is is I don't really have to do any taping here So that could be yellow be the bottom and that green could be the top. Maybe you figured out what I'm doing here so far. I don't know, maybe you haven't. So I can do that one on the bottom or if you can imagine a sunset with some potential silhouettes in here. So shadows fading their way into that background all right i think i know which one i like better do me a favor comment down below what color should i paint this thing do you think i should go with the green and yellow or do you think the multicolor rainbow is uh, a good decision hit it down there below let me know your opinion i know what i like i know what i'm going with let's get down to the layer and start building an al we are down in the layer and it is time to get to it now this is not going to be an al build video i will stop at some key points when i do different things with the paint and the foam and filler i got a special trick for the filler coming up something brand new we're working with so stick around for that but most of this is going to be time lapsed until we get to those those points where it's like you got to check this out type of stuff. So we're going to zip through this build. That's the way this thing sits. We're going to wind up um, possibly primer and over here, I think, uh, that blue so it doesn't bleed through any of my colors. And we're going to go with the dark schemes. So that's going to be red up top. I don't think you're going to see that anyway. It's going to be pretty colored up. But I think we're going to primer over that just to be sure um, and be safe. But it is time to start ripping out all these pieces and start building in an al we are going to do all the custom mods to this we are going to do and i've shared it with everybody uh the aluminum tape on the it's hvac tape on all the leading edges we are going to do the tail light mod that was started by somebody else and we're also going to throw in my cockpit mod in there as well so lots of cool things we're doing to this thing we're going to schnaz it all up and we are going to surprise mark with one heck of a plane Let's go.
So some of the things that I've learned from my AL build, I'll be incorporating into this plane. And the first thing is adding a little bit of extra carbon support in the upper and lower fuselage. This thing is long, so it takes a lot of that bending momentum in maneuvers, landing, and stuff like that. So a little extra support here is going to go a long way. We've also roughed up the foam all the way around there, so it has a little bit more to bite onto. But those carbon pieces... Um, I heated up the aluminum rod and poked holes so they have guidance holes to go into. We'll take this wiring and work it up into the inside of the beer cooler right there. But these carbon rods will give us that extra support. And this gap right here, they give you this tape to cover up and I don't like that and we're going to be using uh, the next top secret thing I'll show you the other thing here that I've noticed in this fuselage and you can see it I think right there is there's um, stickers and stuff on here so I don't know if Mark had started to put this together but I think it's um, obviously been bumped around a little bit and we're going to clean all that up because I don't want that to actually come through in the finished product. I know it'll turn out like that eventually, but in the underside, it also has quite a few. I mean, you can see some scuff marks there and there and some indents in the foam. So we're going to try and take out most of that so it has a really smooth, nice finished product. We have to be careful not to take off the window markings that are already in there, but I do want to clean that up. And some of this stuff... We're just going to have to paint over and deal with it or take it, see if I can get uh, some of those decals off and then redo them. But otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and get this uh, section foam tack together. So we're going to fill all that in with foam tack, all these rods, squish it together, pull it apart, and then finish product. And we're going to see if we can uh, use the next top secret thing and get that at least done tonight. Let's get to it. There she is on the nose and the fuse is assembled. So we're just going to let that sit and dry overnight. Let that foam tack set up. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and fill in that crease. That's probably the ugliest part of this plane, to be honest with you. But we can, we'll fix that up. We'll make it look pretty. When it comes down to some of these small dents and dings in there, I like to use flexible spackle. So we're just going to take that in this little hotel key card. And uh, I'm just going to go over some of these, just just the, such a slight amount. We don't need a ton on there, but just enough that we're going to cover up some of these dents and dings. I want to make this thing look as nice as I possibly can. So a couple simple ones there. And then we have a couple big old goobers up here on the nose. This thing really must have gotten bounced around mark a good bit but we gotta we gotta fix those we don't want to have a nice paint job guys and then have all these dents and dings in it just not yet he can dent and ding it later i don't want it that way and we don't want to have to do a ton of sanding so we don't want too much on there make it a little on the thin side and it looks like we got a couple over here. All right, let's let that uh, dry and get back to it. Now, one of the things here that we can use for gap fillers is going to be this dimensional uh, craft paste. This is made by testers, but it's basically an acrylic medium. It, it's, a, it's a thickener or a big thick glue, if you will. Um, that stuff, once it dries, will harden up just like this stuff is. And you can see what I did is I added spray paint to it. So that way it uh, actually gives it that same color. And you can use this as a deeper fill or a fill over maybe you know a big dent or ding and actually already have it close to the same color now the thicker it is the longer it's going to take to dry once you add paint but if you have time this is just another alternative or you can just simply go with the flexible spackle sand it but you have to seal over the top of it 
this stuff is already going to be sealed for you to paint over the top. So 10 and a half dozen ways or the other, just an option. So all you have to do is just take some of this stuff and scoop it onto, I use mixing lids or just regular plastic lids. Take your spray paint. And then you can just simply mix this stuff together to give you the same color. And if it's not dark enough, then you can just add a little bit more paint if you notice that the color is off. And then just keep stirring and mixing and blending until you get the right color. So you can see it's a little dark. I may need to add more if I want to get it to the, the perfect texture. If you're happy, okay, having it close, it's just another option if you want something different than spackle and you can actually add some believe it or not if you haven't done it yet you can add color to spackle you can add color to epoxy i do this stuff all the time with epoxy but um, you can see how we start working towards that color so a little bit more paint in there will get us even closer yet but you need drying time with this where you need less with the spackle again you have to seal the top of the spackle before you paint it otherwise it's uh, it sucks right into it and it looks off color compared to everything else so just another tip or trick we're going to get into uh sanding now we applied some spackle over some dents and dings in this fuselage that we needed to fix so we're going to cut into the time lapse there and something to keep in mind don't just use sandpaper as you go over i'm using 400 grit i 3d printed these blocks and put some craft foam for cushion but this will give me the ability to create um Make sure you can see over there. This will give me the ability to create a nice edge or a clean sand rather than stripey finger marks. So um, let's get to doing a little bit of sanding here, guys. All right, guys, again, this is the uh, Tester's Dimensional Craft Paste. It's, uh, again, what they call an acrylic medium. So it's basically just like a thickener that you can add paint to. But I, I like, as I showed you, it stays flexible. So down in these deep channels, um, this stuff works really good because it's a little bit thinner and you can really push that stuff down into there, but it's kind of got a glue base to it a little bit. So that also will help with some adhesion and with that flexibility, it'll help to hold anything together if there is any flex there. And it's easy to wipe off with just some water So we can really work that stuff way down into that crack and really help to fill it. So I've really found a liking um, for this stuff. Really just kind of fill that stuff in. And if I have to really close some bigger gaps, um, by far the spackle works better on the bigger stuff. But for these deep channels like this, this acrylic medium is perfect. And then like I showed you, you can add, got junk falling over here. Um, you can add the paint to it. So you can actually fill stuff in and already have the paint pretty color matched to what you, what you need, the color of your plane. So super, super cool little tidbit here that I, love using now that I've discovered it and that's how easy that is guys to fill let me take you pop you off of there that's how easy it is just to fill in that spacing. Now, at the top, I use some spackle to blend that down because this sits a little bit higher than here. But really, that fills in there very, very nicely. Very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and clean that up. Just put a, a little bit of water on a rag and we'll wipe it down. So here we just have a little bit of water on a rag. You can see it takes off any excess that you've smeared around. Which is nice, easy cleanup. All right, 
Easy peasy, I like it. Let's let it dry. And we'll take a once over and I'll show you guys where we are right now. So our acrylic median is really dried and filled in uh, in the center. And I've done some spackling work over the outside to get rid of just about most of the seaming that I can. And then here on the top, I did the same thing. So we got to do a final sand, I think, to this. Um, maybe one more slight putty job just on the sides here to cover up those those edges or maybe even just sand those down just a little bit we'll see but just a little bit more here and then we'll get ready for acrylic and uh, polycrylic and primer check it out so the back of the fuselage is all dried up cured sanded over uh, we went ahead and went over it with the polycrylic with about four or five coats right there so you can see it gives it that nice fiberglass look everything is blended in again one of the secrets here is using a straight bar to sand so that way you don't get waves or lumps in any of that drywall spackle that you've put on there so that is um as good as we're going to get this thing all the way down that fuselage you could still see a little bit of the line there but when we go ahead and primer this thing we shouldn't see any of that anymore there's some of it right in here around the latch and stuff that you're just not going to be able to do anything about but the rest of it's going to be pretty pretty covered up so with that being said it is time to start doing the masking we got to mask off all of our stuff in here um, we're going to mask off our lights any of the openings in the back there those lights and then we have to get around the canopy area and for that i have an old roll of uh, tamaya trim tape that works really really good to get around those corners so let's go ahead and get the masking off so we can get some primer laid on this thing All right, our primer is dried overnight. We've let that cured, now it's time to sand it. All we're gonna do is literally take some 400 grit sandpaper and you can see how we track on some of the little foam dots in there and stuff. So we're gonna just take the 400 grit and we're gonna work on smoothing everything out before we put some paint on it. All right, guys, it is time to throw some color on this. I'm pretty happy with the sand down. Hopefully everything turns out as um, I hope or expect. And with that being said, if you remember back to our practice paint, that's the scheme that we're gonna be going on this. So we are gonna start with a yellow bottom. Once that's cured, I'm gonna tape all that off and then I'll paint the green underbelly on a hard line exactly where I want it. But for now, we're going to work on getting the uh, yellow on the bottom and starting to fade going up. So our yellow is done on the base. Now we're going to go with a golden sunset. We're going to kind of fade from there up before we go into the orange and red. So we're going to kind of use 
I don't want pinstripe lines because it's kind of like a sunset or a horizon. So I'm using from the edge of that canopy and I'm going to come down over to yellow all the way to the leading edge of that uh, horizontal stab insert hole. So uh, let's go ahead and get to painting. Now we're gonna fade into a, uh, a deeper orange before we start fading into the red. So, so far, uh, I really like the way it looks. I'm not exactly sure how I wanna blend that top in yet. I think I wanna use some black in there, but I kinda don't know how I wanna overspray that yet. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and shoot some uh, light red or this orange in here and start to blend that in. All right, stop. Bummer time. So here's the deal. I had to pull out the vertical stab, all because I'm trying to wire in my lights. This one will blink and go solid. This one doesn't do anything. The uh, really unfortunate part is, as I went to go fish and look at wires, those lights, the harness for those is literally that big. So there's no way to plug in and out of the thing. Uh, it had come loose or was never plugged in the right way, whatever it is. So that meant that I had to pull this lens assembly out. I'm gonna have to uh, canopy glue or foam tack that thing back into place, but neither here nor there. I like mine to strobe in the back. Personal preference, you can set them up on the inside here so that way they either strobe or they're solid. But I like to use that port to make those for the vertical stab illuminate solid. And then I also Y harness it to make my light for the cockpit up on the inside. So what I did in the interim, since I had to gut that vertical stabilizer and pull that apart, I just simply make myself a, um, a harness that's going to split with both of those ends in the tail. And then I can use my trusty wire fish and string to pull that harness all the way up and through. Uh, while I'm in there, we're gonna add Velcro to the bottom plate in here. We're gonna start to tidy up some of the wires while literally we just sit and watch paint dry. So trying to make effective use of our time. We are down to seven days in order to make the next fly in so we can get this plane to mark. So let's get going. I guess on the uh, blue version, the one that comes with the tail art already on it, they put some of the decals already on here, which as you can see, as you go to take them off, if you're gonna do the repaint, take some of the tape with it. But I guess at the end of the day, thanks to Cali from Cali Graphics, she's the one that has supplied all of the graphics for this airplane. I've worked with her. Uh, for a while She is the one that did all the art for my AL 37 So of course that's who I go back to when I want to do another project. She does phenomenal work but all of her decals perfectly matched up size and um, Look if you will So I know that even if I paint this over and it leaves um, an indentation that's actually good for me because then I know exactly where these decals go back to So Callie is um, very busy she's she's usually a couple orders deep usually a hundred and uh, It takes a while to get your stuff, but guys it's well worth the wait and in the meantime you can do all of the prep work necessary for your model so those are off uh, I'm going to take the screws out and then I'm going to show you something super cool here we go super cool tip 
I have been experimenting with uh, with this throughout this project, and guys, it works, and it works well. Get regular talcum powder. I go ahead and put some in a pile like that. Go ahead and get myself a towel of some kind, and everywhere you don't want that tape to peel the paint up, rub it. Rub it in the talcum powder. And just rub that over the surface. And what I found, it doesn't matter if you get some on the part you're painting because it's just simply going to uh, absorb it within the paint. So I go around that ring. And then I'm going to go around this nacelle pod and cover this whole thing so it doesn't peel any of the paint. Now I'm going to tape it and then paint it and then I will show you guys what happens when I remove the other one. So um, let's time lapse this and then uh, we'll get painting and then we'll pull it off. Two coats, let's paint it. I think I got my thumb more than the pod. All right, we're gonna let that dry. About five minutes, we're gonna shoot it again. Here's coat number two. I think that looks uh, pretty decent. So, here it is. Here's our uh, litmus test, if you will. <laughs> Look at that. That just changed. That just changed the foam game. The foam painting game. So let's take the rest of this off. And I'll be honest with you, it doesn't change the tack of the tape hardly at all. And I am using this uh, 3M Delicate. But look at what still clean lines you get. What an amazing trick. Absolutely amazing. I got a little overspray on that one, but I'll take it. No peeled paint, 
that's a little lacquer thinner and we'll touch that right up. Look at that. There is not one speck of peeled paint anywhere. <laughs> Just playing crazy for the win. Love it. The inside of there, we're going to paint up black and gray and give it some uh, dirty engine look. But all right, let's let these dry. We'll clean that off and uh, get the mountainies. And there you have it, everybody. That's part one of the special AL37 build for my buddy Mark. Do me a favor, smash the like button if you enjoyed it. If you're going to hit the thumbs down button, do it twice for me. Like, share, subscribe as always. And don't forget to join us next week right here where we're going to finish up part number two and do the Cali graphics install. So with that being said, I'm Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. I know you're just playing crazy for watching. Peace out. Happy flights.